This is the future of the bantamweight division. Aljamain Sterling, one foot out the door. He says, without, without a doubt, this is my last fight at 135. Sean O'Malley says, this is a win-win for me because if I win, I'm the champ. If I lose, I'm the last dude to fight for the belt, so I'm still the champ. How do you see the implications of this matchup? You basically hit the nail on the head, Derek. It seems like Sugar Show doesn't have anything to lose besides a little bit of his ego. And even with the last fight that he had against Piotr Jan, Piotr Jan, excuse me, I think that ego kind of got a little checked right there. So maybe we're going to come in. We're going to see a hungrier Sean O'Malley. Maybe we're going to come in and see a Sean O'Malley that's just a grappler since day one now. But I don't know, Derek. Do you think he able, is able to pull out those kind of skills, or is this going to be a classic striker versus submission artist right here? This is the tough part, man. Sean O'Malley is arguably one of the most dynamic finishers that you have seen grace the UFC's octagon. Like, legitimately. He's acrobatic. He's athletic. Fast twitch motions. He just looks smooth in there. It's butter when he's in there striking. We have not seen an opponent say, I'm going to put you mat return, mat return, grab your back, mat return. And the one time that we did see it, well, guess what? It was like the worst fight IQ in the world. It was Andre Sukumtoth, right? After Sean, Sean O'Malley hurt his leg, he said, I'm going to go for the takedown, right? So it, it's just tough, man, because we have not seen him there. A lot of people really do like to criticize his strength of schedule and say that, I mean, at the end of the day, man, he has not fought the dudes that Aljamain Sterling has fought. And I think without... Any doubt, that's absolutely true. Now, let's take a look really quickly at, like, the win percentages. Sean O'Malley, like, what, one submission win, something like that? I think all of his victories are all knockouts across the board, man. So it's like, it's such a, dy a dynamic approach to this fight. It's either Sean O'Malley cleans him up on the feet, O'Malley, or Sterling chokes him. But do you see any in-between there? Like, how do we stay in one side for one person or the other? I do see a little in between there, Derek, and I want to touch on a point you said earlier. Uh, not a lot of people are able to get Sean O'Malley down to the ground and nonetheless Matt return like crazy. Aljo is one of the few that I see being able to have the niche to be able to get that done. The mm -hmm. thing is, can you grab a hold of Sugar Show, especially when he's in that flow state and it's right there where I think we're going to see that mix. I don't think it's going to be a one-sided knockout affair or it's going to be a one-sided backpack affair. I, I do think when both of these fighters get in that flow state, really start feeling themselves, getting past that first, second round, then we're going to see that mix them up, man. We're going to see a lot of grappling, a lot of washing machine-esque fights, if you will. I think we're going to see a lot of the clinch game worked really, really well, as well as Sean O'Malley controlling the distance. That's what he's used to. So that's not a surprise right there. But as far as the takedowns, that's where I think we're going to see this fight transition to who's going to be the better man. Let's say Sean O'Malley's back hits the ground four, five, six times. That's kind of a good thing for Sean because he's able to get up, tire Aljo down, let him go. But if Aljo's able to hold him down all day long, it's going to be a, a massive mountain to climb. Mm -hmm. Do you see Sean O'Malley being able to get up off the ground if he's taken down? You know what's crazy, man? And, and this could just come from blind optimism. But from the tape that I've seen just of him in camp, you don't see it in actual fights, but in camp. His grappling actually looks legit, man. Like, he looks like his ability to create scrambles and to create madness out of those opportunities are more or less second to none, you know what I mean? Like, but it looks like that. I don't know if that's true. Aljamain Sterling proves it. His is legitimate. He puts the backpack on you. You're pretty much not going nowhere. And that's what scares me about this matchup. If you're a Sean O'Malley, better right here. But also if you're an Aljamain Sterling, um, better as well. Because look at Sean O'Malley versus Piotr Jan. And really all that I'm going to say about this is that Sean O'Malley in that fight, very close fight, had the bigger moments, the flashier, bloodier moments. If he can create more moments in this matchup and Aljamain Sterling racks up a ton of control time but isn't able to finish O'Malley, that's where it gets interesting. Can you see O'Malley winning like a super close split decision or like a super close unanimous decision based off of exactly what I just mentioned? 100% Derek I think that side of the card is a little more in favor for Sugar Show especially because in late at least late history we've seen that a damage outweighs control time and and that's mm -hmm. kind of the thing right here Going forward, man, Sugar Show has those moments. He has that kind of star power. And if you take at least the media's outlook on it, not too many people are a big fan of Aljo, you know, an undeserved champ, if you will. I'm not saying that's why the air quotations are there. We've seen mm -hmm. this man get to work, and we've seen him do some really good work in that octagon. But I think if Sugar Show is able just to have squeak out just a little bit more like that, Maybe a little bit of that Uncle Dana money to the uh, to the refs or to the judges, excuse me, will you know will, will slide a little bit. Who knows if it does? But I do think that the silver spoon mentality that Sean O'Malley has kind of taken on, where uh, you know, like you said before earlier, 
Sean O'Malley has not fought the same kind of caliber of opponents uh, Aljamain has, arguably because he's one of the cash cows of the UFC going forward. That right there kind of gives him a little bit of just a little extra, just a little extra for those judges to really kind of style on for him. Now, the thing that I'm curious about, Derek, you mentioned it a little earlier, Aljamain certainly. Last fight in this weight class, man. Last fight at 135. We've seen him struggle with the weight. Obviously, the first fight he had against Piotr Jan, man, struggling hard, down. He was tired. He looked like that kind of thing. And if you look at the way Aljo's looking, boy, he is stacked, stacked, jacked, and ready to rumble. Will we see a weight issue? Will we see a cardio issue going forward for this one? What do you think? Well, it's tough to say, depending on... What type of fight can you have? Can Sean O'Malley stuff 10 takedowns out of 20? You know what I mean? Like, can he? If Aljamain Sterling is nonstop foot on the gas and and Sean O'Malley is sprawling brawl all of a sudden or creating wicked scrambles where he's just, Aldridge can never really get his hands on him, I can see some problems arising. But the other problem is that Sean O'Malley has never fought five rounds. Aljamain Sterling is coming off of what? Let me see. One, two, three, four, five round fights. And what three of those four fights actually went the distance. So it's different, man. I think in terms of cardio, you always going to give it to Aljamain Sterling in terms of everything else imaginable in terms of damage, shock value, highlight excitement. It's got to be Sean O'Malley. It has to be, you know what I mean? So I think it's time at the end of the day, let's give our picks, bro. Sean O'Malley hasn't had the greatest last five fantastic highlight victory wins, but Holly and Paiva, uh, Pedro Munoz, I poke, you know, Peter Jan is really like the icing on the cake. If Sean O'Malley gets it done, does he have to get it done KO? Does he have to get it done KO? No, Derek. I think he can win the the style points from those referees that we were talking about, the judges we were talking Mm -hmm. about earlier. You see some flying knees or you see some spinning stuff. You see Sean O'Malley set up his traps. The, The crazy thing is we see him set up the traps, but he's actually setting up two traps down the road. That right there is for Sean O'Malley to win the decision. But to be honest with you, Derek, I'm rocking with that plus 300 TKO knockout, brother. That's the one I'm thinking. Give it to me round three. I might even say uh, uppercut, something like that. See him shooting in. We're going to see some flash coming out of the Sugar Show side. How do you see this one ending, Derek? Well, one thing that I like that you said was round three. There's something about that number that really, really interests me. And I think that Aljamain Sterling, inevitably, is just going to be too overwhelming in terms of the fundamentals, man grappling ground control hold you down don't let you do the flashiness he might have to eat a shot i think and i anticipate him getting knocked down and everybody had in sean o'malley having the big moment but i think this is going to be a matter of the the glitz and the glam versus the bread and the butter and i'm going to take bread and butter nine times out of ten and i'm taking aljamain sterling right here submission victory round three that's how i see it for the funk master and then it's going to be marab's division to take if he can get past sean o'malley so With that being said, AJ, last thing, and then we're going to move on. Normally, it's a quick move on from here. My only question is, just as an MMA fan, as an MMA fan, and no sides taken, you don't care who wins, does Sean O'Malley, bantamweight champion, does that, how does that sound to you? Are you offended? Are you like, oh, I love to see it? Are you in between? Are you indifferent? What, What are your thoughts? Taking all my biases out of it, Derek, I think Sugar Show as a UFC champion is one of the best things that can happen to to the organization. You know, he has the flair. He has the flash. We can see another Conor McGregor-esque star being born, and he's been... He's been doing the work since, what, 2014, 2013, something around there, when he was on the Contender Series. I think it's a good thing. What about you? I kind of feel like it's the... UFC's full indulgence into WWE personally. It's like Brock Lesnar being champion, but it's just because Sean O'Malley is a character and he's fun and that's it. He's a, a master of branding and marketing, you know what I mean? But with that being said, those are your Bloody Water Podcast picks, the two different picks there, Aljo or Sugar Show. You decide. Let us know in the comments who you ended up rocking with.